All right, guys, when I was looking for a scanner, I was really curious as to what functions the different scanners offered for specific cars, mainly, obviously, the cars that I own, and, uh, you know, what kind of uh, data they would display. Couldn't get a lot of information, you know, uh, from a lot I'd posted on forums, didn't really get a whole lot of, uh, you know, people responding to what I needed to know. So I went ahead and just bought me this Snap-on Varus. <clears throat> I was looking obviously at the Autel. Um, went with the Snap-on. I've got a Snap-on, an older Snap-on scanner. It's been great. Uh, wanted a newer one with the latest software. This one's got the 16.2 software. Um, which at the time that I bought this was the latest one. They now have the 16.4. Don't know what additional features it has but I thought I'd go through show you guys some of the stuff that this shows for a 2007 BMW 328i um, got a couple cool features that I've already used um, and I thought I'd just go through we'll go through some of the screens that way you can see specifically what's available and what's not in case you're looking at buying a scanner and you got a BMW you, you can see for yourself what what functions are are there to help make you know make up your mind so we'll click over here on scanner <clears throat> BMW 2007 we'll do automatic ID so far I've had every car I've hooked this to it has uh, been able to ID the car accurately um, it also has a manual mode which is real easy you just go through you tell it what make model engine size uh, and it it goes through and, and does that that is correct so I'll click OK and as you can see, I mean, there's already tons of, I mean, it's pretty much every module that this car has on it, it, it will be able to read. I'm probably not going to go through every single one of these because we'd be here for a while, but I will go through, obviously, some of the more important ones. First one, of course, it's got code scan. Very first block is code scan. It'll scan every single thing on the car and uh, come back and, and uh, tell you what you know what code you've got then it's got clear codes so anything that it come up with you can clear every single code on it um, and we'll go from here alright guys sorry I had to get a battery um, okay so we're here at the main screen and this is all the different modules that's on this car So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go through some of the more important ones, at least what I think is important. Um, and we'll, we're not going to look at all the features and functions or go through them, but I'm going to let you look at basically the tabs that are there and what is available, you know, to do. First thing we're going to do is engine. So we're going to click engine. It says it's got to correctly identify the system. Click continue. Of course, it's got codes, clear codes, data. The main thing that this video is about is what functional test this scanner is capable of doing on this particular car. Again, it's a 2007 BMW 328i, so I'm going to click functional test. We'll do actuator test. The two tabs we got now is actuator test and special functions. We're going to do actuator test. And as you can see, it has quite a few tests that you can run on this car. Let me scroll up. I mean, I, there's not too many things you can't do. If you're having issues and you need to run a test to, to check something to see if the computer can control it, this scanner pretty much covers that. Um, we'll see what's under special functions. One of the main things that a BMW is famous for is when you replace the battery, you're supposed to register the battery. 
this does allow you to do that <clears throat> um, it does not allow you to change the battery it does have uh, a history of the battery last battery replacements got your miles that was the last time I replaced the battery on this it's a normal lead acid it would be nice if this scanner would allow you to change the amper hour and the type of battery but it does not but if you're putting the same battery in you can register the battery um, and I'll just let you kind of read what it's got that way if you've got a BMW that you're wanting to work on you can see what this scanner's capable of doing. I'm also going to do the service reset. Engine items, brake items, instrument items, air conditioning items. So this scanner will let you reset the service intervals on pretty much everything that this this car has. So we're going to go back We'll go ahead and do transmission. Actuator test. It's everything that you can do to the transmission. It's a very easy scanner to, to use. Okay, now this is on uh, the anti-lock brakes, actuator test, you can check the pump motor, do special functions, steering angle reset, bleeding procedure, adjustment of the DSC sensor, and the DSC unit. airbag, uh, cruise control, active steering, central information. Let's see what, what's underneath that. I'm not sure if I've ever even clicked on that. Yeah, it says uh, no communication. Don't know what's going on with that. Maybe maybe this car doesn't have that. Uh, we'll do air conditioning. I know it's got air conditioning. So you got AC compressor, automatic air conditioning, functional check, flat motors, independent says slash aux heater function indicator light immobilizer uh, everybody's probably wanting to know what all you can do there of course they've all got the full codes and uh, data display okay under the immobilizer you got reset cash unit control unit reset remote control ID and under special functions you've got cast resynchronization lock and enable master key ELV fault counter reset and starter interlock reset Uh, we'll do. We're gonna do footwell module. And I'm just gonna go through and let you kind of see 
what's available. Again, this is so if you're thinking of getting a scanner and you're curious as to what what a scanner like this uh, is capable of, you know, you can watch this video and you can you can decide for yourself if it does does what you need it to do. I'm going to talk about this window installation uh, initialization deal real quick because. I've already used that function and I tell you what that was a huge time saver I've had to replace both window regulators in this car um, the car's got 88,000 miles on it and they both went out within one month of one another the first one was on the the uh, driver's rear door and ordered another regulator relatively cheap paid about forty dollars for an OEM regulator off eBay installed it did not have this scanner at that time um, I spent probably an hour on the internet trying to figure out what I needed to do to get the auto crush feature to work right and what that is is whenever the window senses a high enough current draw it it assumes there's something stuck in the window like a kid or whatever a pet and, it's, and it automatically rolls the window back down well whenever that regulator went out it got out of sync so when I put the new one in when it would do the auto roll up um, whenever it would get all the way up it senses that high current and it starts rolling the window back down so you'd have to milk the window up real easy and then you could finally get it to stay up and like I say, it took me probably an hour. Numerous forums. Everybody's got a different way that they say you've got to do everything in order to reset that. I did finally get it. Like I say, it took me about an hour of running in and out of the house, finding different procedures that certain people say you've got to do before I finally found one that apparently worked. I don't know if I just got lucky. I, I could have swore I've, I had already done that procedure earlier and it didn't work and then finally it started working. So I don't know at what point, it, you know, that it that it took care of it. Anyway, when the second window regulator went out, I actually had this scanner. I had just bought it. I was playing around with it. This was before the regulator went out and I saw that it said window initialization. So I thought, I'm not sure what that is, but you know if I ever have a window problem I guess I'll try it out well a couple weeks after that that regulator went out on the passenger side bought another regulator put it in had the same problem it roll up and then it automatically rolled back down so I grabbed the scanner hooked it up I did this window initialization feature and it took maybe five seconds all it does is it roll wherever the windows are at at that time it rolls all four windows down and rolls them back up and it it tells the computer where full down and full up is at and it, it's it's now set they work great it, it was unbelievably easy resetting that window with this scanner so if any of you guys have ever replaced your regulator window regulators and you notice that problem this scanner makes that job ridiculously easy anyway press on okay where was we at that's football module I believe um, electronic power steering this car does not have that so I don't at least I don't think it does I don't know I guess we'll see Yeah, this car doesn't have that. Okay, we'll go to instrument panel. Okay, there's no functional test on the instrument panel. Um, but you know, let's click data. I don't know, some of you might be curious as to what all is displayed for data. For the instrument panel, this is what you get for, for uh, data, whenever you're displaying the data. Not a whole lot of data here, but it does have some
Not sure what Junction Box Electronics is really, but let's click it. Okay. Well, under that you got your central locking. Now what do we have under special functions? Okay, we got window initialization under that too. Rain sensor, park distance control, seat module driver. Let's see what that's, what's underneath that. Active seat, lumbar. So as you can see, this, this scanner covers quite a bit of stuff. They say control unit, interior and reading lights, special functions, slide tilt sunroof, oh, okay. Um, tire pressure monitor. Check that. I had a friend that was having problems with that the other day on his car. So, functional test, actuator test, RDC reset. Okay. Special functions, tire pressure adaptation manual procedure. So, you can. If you have to replace a sensor, you can go ahead and get that sensor working with this scanner. And let's, let's go ahead and read the data. I'll do will data. That's all we need. Will position. Oops, sorry about that guys, hit the button. Now let's do wheel alignment. Steering angle sensor. After any distance steering geometry. through that everything's working great so I'm not gonna worry about that video module I don't think this car's got that yeah it does have rain sensor let's see what the rain sensor Let's see what it shows under rain sensor. This does not really do any amount of coding. One of the things that would have been nice is some of the more basic features as far as one thing that I would like to have had done to this car is have it programmed to where when you turn the key off, the, the mirrors automatically fold up. 
and then when you start the car they fold out right now we got to hit the button to do that um, be nice if it's automatic or uh, be nice if they allowed you to turn that on or off from within the car but they don't and the scanner doesn't allow allow you to do that okay right now we're under rain sensor rain sensor initialization yeah okay that looks like the only thing that allows you to do there and I don't know uh, you know other than showing you all the different things here that it's got pulled up I don't know what else to we'll do a code scan and show you what all it goes through and does and finds and how easy it is to clear them You can read up here the percentage of progress that it's at. And this shows the modules that it's already scanned. And then any codes, you can see we've already got, we got one code under engine. And then it displays it right here. Power management, current monitor. We're at 32 percent. Sixty percent. And if there's if there's something that you saw on the list that I did not click on, and you want me to, you have a BMW, you you're curious as to what is under that tab, if you click on it. Just leave a comment. I will hook it back up. I'll click on that to show you what's available. Uh, you know, just just ask what you want. I will I will do that if you if you want me to. Like I say, I wish that people would have done that for me whenever I was trying to figure out if I wanted to go with the Snap On, the Autel, the Launch. Um, but you know, I understand people's busy. But it sure would have been helpful, you know, if someone would have taken the time to, you know, to do that. And you'll see that this car has got four codes under the uh, park distance control. We have a sensor that uh, is bad back there. And I'm in the process of getting that replaced. So that's what that's all about. So systems detected, 15 different systems on this car that it found. Um, other than the, the engine code, which it says power management, current monitor, not sure exactly what that is. You can go through with this and, and it'll walk you through it. I'm not going to do that because frankly every time I scan this car there's always some kind of code. These cars are notorious. For setting nuisance codes don't really have much of a problem with anything the, the part control I know what all four of those are the, that's the bad sensor that needs to be replaced um, I will look up this 2d ED 
just to see what the what it does say but right now what we'll do we're going to go back and we're going to click codes uh, to clear the codes and then uh, we're going to be done here if you, like I say if you guys want to see anything specific leave a comment let me know what you want to see or ask about if you want to know something about the Varus asking and, and I'll uh, I'll let you know a lot of people a lot of people I've read a lot of negative comments about the snap-on Varus and, and you know now I've never owned the Altel uh, you know I've read a lot of negative things about the Altel I mean which one do you go with you know that was my big that, that was my biggest problem I mean you, you read all this stuff and you, you read people love the snap-on people love the Altel then you read the people that hate the Snap-on and the people that hate the Autel. I do know that Snap-on has better customer service. I, I, there's no doubt about that. Um, I'm right now. I, I love this Varus. This thing is going to be a tremendous help to me whenever I'm working on my own cars and you know the the people's cars that I work on. This, this thing's going to be a, a blessing. Uh, you know, I don't know. You're just going to have to make up your mind. Snap-on's been around forever. I have no doubt that 10, 15, 20 years from now, they're still going to be around. Autel, uh, you, at this point, you really can't say. You might buy that Autel five years from now. Autel may be out of business. You're trying to get the thing fixed, and, you know, you got a $2,000 scanner that... It, it, you can't get you can't get fixed right now hotels seeming to be coming on strong there is a lawsuit from Ford pending uh, you know I've read a lot of things about the hotel that they have taken functions out of their scanner because of that loss that lawsuit I don't know if that's true or not that's just stuff that I've read you know on their on their forum but no one's suing Snap-on that I know of. So one of the other reasons I bought this, I have it or had, I already sold it. I had another four-channel lab scope that was just a dedicated lab scope. And it's nice to have a lab scope. Whenever you're checking these sensors on these newer cars, if you want to know for sure if they're good or bad, you've got to have a lab scope. Um, there's just so much you can do with a multimeter. You've got to be able to see a quicker signal to see if a sensor's bad. Um, and so this had the four channel lab scope built in, so I figured if I bought this, I could sell my, my other lab scope, which I did. So that was another reason why I went with the, went with the Snap-on. Okay, it's cleared all the codes. Every module, all 15 systems, codes are now clear. Head okay to that. And that's pretty much all I was wanting to show you guys. If there's, like I said, if there's something in here that you see that you want me to click on and go deeper into, you know, leave a comment. Let me know. And if, if, if this car is capable of doing that, like I said, we went to this central information display earlier, and I don't, I guess it doesn't have that because it, 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 it didn't have no luck with that, but everything else that we've clicked on so far, you know, it at least had some information there. Um, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and sign off and leave some comments.